Deforestation rose 28% in 2013 compared to the year before. So what's behind the turnaround? Most of the usual culprits. Farmers, ranchers, loggers and the officials who turn a blind eye to illegal logging. And now there may be a new threat. The looming end of a global moratorium on buying and selling soybeans planted on newly cleared forest land. Correspondent Jerry Haddon takes us to meet some of the people trying to defend Brazil's environment. In fact, what he learns is that environmental activism in Brazil can be a very dangerous undertaking. Este é um pau, é para você receber os nomes e as músicas e ele ajuda a gente para receber, para dar os nossos filhos, nossos netos. Eu recebi esse nome, o meu nome seria a tradução, o homem que faz a paz. Nós acreditamos que o espírito ele está com a gente, não está assim. Isso é a tradição. É o espírito do cerrado, a, as águas e, os, e, a, e o cerrado, as árvores e os pássaros. Não tem acima, é mais no plano, é com a gente. Todos eles têm espírito e cada um com diferente de espírito. Não tem uma coisa só, este é todo. The Shivanti people's beliefs and their traditional way of life are under threat. Persecuted from the colonial period onward, the tribe now makes its stand in this pre-Amazon wilderness, but they are surrounded. The forests where they hunt and gather are shrinking. The invader? Soybeans, huge industrial farms now covering millions of acres of what were once woodlands and tropical savanna. Brazil has become the king of soy, for the government is a point of pride. For some landowners and multinationals, the oil seed is gold. But not everyone is a winner. This is where the Shavanti's protected reserve meets big soy. A desse lado, o território nosso, desse lado não é mais. Mas pela legislação brasileira ambiental, não pode estar muito próximo do rio. Isso a gente vem denunciando várias vezes. O SEMA, ele passa por aqui, acerta com os ruralistas, e não, e bamo parece, mas nada acontece. Vê aqui, tem criação de galinha, os porcos, cocô desses animais, eles caem para cá. E a gente pesca nesse rio. Então, muitas vezes, sobrevoa também o avião e solta o veneno. Quando, com, quando tem vento, ele leva para o nosso território. A gente ha estado enferma devido ao, ao veneno? Sim. Isso a gente está pedindo para a saúde, que cuida da saúde indígena, para averiguar as águas, porque morrem as crianças com diarreia e muitos pescadores vêm para pescar por aqui. Isso é, as, as crianças comem. Toptiro says his forest enclave has shrunk by half since the soy boom began. If the trend continues, his tribe's very existence could be at stake. The Brazilian government did not respond to requests for interviews from CCTV, nor did the soy industry players. They are a busy bunch. Eu quebro o protocolo e começo cumprimentando a esses produtores e a essas produtoras. This was Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff earlier this year, congratulating farmers in Mato Grosso on their record yields. This despite a moratorium on soy from new fields in place since 2006. Eight years ago, Greenpeace and other groups launched a global war on soy and won. Under pressure, most of the world agreed to stop buying Brazilian soybeans planted on newly cleared forests. Big restaurant chains such as McDonald's signed on. Nobody wanted bad press. Suddenly, it seemed, soy could be controlled. Deforestation could be slowed, halted, maybe even reversed. I think the moratorium has been a tremendous success. Uh, it was an agreement forged between civil society and, and uh, the companies that buy almost 70% of, of Brazil's soybeans from the Amazon region. 
and it's fulfilled a really important purpose, which is you know to have clean supply chains that didn't have deforestation embedded in them. What it means is, you know, we have, the moratorium has eliminated deforestation in the, so in the soy harvest. It's amazing. Less than 1% of soy produced in the Brazilian Amazon today is associated with deforestation after 2006. So in that sense, it worked. But the moratorium expires in December to be replaced by a supposedly better monitoring and land registration system. But conservationists are dismayed. The lifting of the ban coincides with an unexpected spike in deforestation last year. Nepstead says people should be concerned, but not about soy. I think what's driving up deforestation in 2013, we had a 28% increase it's above the, the year before. It's still the second lowest year on record since 88 when monitoring began. From our read, uh, a lot of things contributed to that. One of them is, uh, you know, half of that increase took place in the state of Pará. And you've got Bela Manches, you've got a, a land rush along the BR-163 because those land prices are going up as the, hydro, uh, the dams and the waterways extend down the top of Jos Tedes Pires. Route 163 also happens to be Brazil's soy highway. Day and night, trucks haul millions of tons of the stuff from Mato Grosso to ports in the northern Amazon for export. Forest clearing is evident all along the way. There's no telling how much forest this will claim, but the far worse problem, some say, is simply inefficient use of land already cleared. I think that we are not using the, the land as we, we should. We have a lot of